I'm a trained dancer. If I could do anything without getting hurt, it's dancing. But you can't even walk off a stage without falling. That was one fucking time! And that's <laughs> enough. And to prevent you from any further mistakes, let's start this show. Hello out there, this is ANY, and welcome to the fourth episode. You see, guys, I told you last time it will be tricky for me to actually keep the numbers straight. It's, it's the fourth episode of... Uh, can, can, we, can we cast? just name... Yeah, let the awkward cast. The awkward, awkward cast. Yeah. Uh, awkward, A and yeah. Y and Key. Something with a W. Worry about. Work about. Wonder. Wonder about. Uh, random drivel. And Should one day. Keep, we need to change the stream logo to have like the 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 um. The, uh, the anagram, anagram on it, so, so that I actually can read it off and one day we'll be able to actually start our stream with yes, me announcing like the name correctly. Like <laughs> yes, but welcome to the Awkward Cast, everyone. Okay, um, I would say, because I have the very, very vague gut feeling, I don't know why, that you might have a lot to say about your last week and probably that your media and last week's uh, segments fall into one. Could this be? Actually, no, it oh. does not. Oh, 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 okay. I just, great. Now you destroyed my big plan I had for this episode. Like me doing mine two first and then basically giving you the stage. Well, fine. So I guess we stick to our usual structure then. So, yeah, Keyframe, how was your last week? Did you do anything special? Eh, not really. Uh, okay, okay, so my week was very great. Shut, I wanna... shut, the, shut, the, shut the moss up, I'm talking. Um, I saved myself there. Oh, uh, you, you totally saved the rating of the stream, except for the <laughs> fact that probably the first words the people heard out of your mouth was an F word. It was for moss. No, 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 moss. before, in the very beginning. Oh, Anyways, okay. continue, please. God dang it. Um, I went to Atlanta the, the past week to go to MoaCon, which is this big convention in Georgia with anime and, like, cartoons. Animu! And music. Hmm? Animu! Oh, yeah, the, all that stuff. So, um, I went to my flight, uh... At first time flying with Spirit, that was an interesting experience. Um, and then I fl and then we got there. Everything was fine. Oh my God, the first hotel we. Here's the thing: we actually stayed at two different hotels. The first one, which was the one that they initially booked, Atlanta is like it. There's nice places in Atlanta, and then there's the places you shouldn't go. And they booked. A our, my bosses are Irish and English. They've never been to Atlanta. <laughs> so they booked us at the isn't Atlanta, place. Isn't Atlanta basically Las Vegas light? Kind of. Okay. I thought but so. Like, but like, you may be thinking of Atlantic City, but still. Uh, crime rate wise, probably. But like, um, the first hotel we stayed at, we just were so terrified. We were like, we're going to get shot. Um, and like, um, the hallways looked like they're something out of The Shining. So we were like, we're going to book into a different hotel. We booked to the hotel that was right next to the convention center. And I'm just kind of sitting here like, why didn't we do this in the first place? <laughs> Cause this is where everyone was, uh, but whatever. And, and why didn't um, they? Did they give a reason? No. <laughs> It's just we're like, hey, let's go a little bit off scene for our stay at a convention where we won't spend time in the hotel room anyways. Uh, yep. is, this, is, this, is this, has this been their first convention? No. <sighs> God. Either way. Those British uh, people. Those British people. All, all of them. You, you can forget all of them. Don't say, don't say too much bad crap about them, man. I work for them. Oh, right. Except those two. Those two are pretty brilliant and they have a fantastic YouTube channel by the name of DA Games. Go there. Watch it. They are great people. They have fantastic title cards. Continue. Thank you. Um, anyway, <clears throat> the, the con was pretty good. 
I spent the first day basically um, walking around the artist alley and stuff and talking to different artists that were there. And it's the most surreal feeling at this point that I actually give my business cards to them instead of, you know, them giving them to me. Like, we swapped. But it's like the feeling of giving my business card to people who are basically professionals and stuff is just like, whoa. It's, it's, it's a very surreal feeling. Like... Um, one of the people there was Jeremy Whitley, who wrote for, who writes for IDW comics, like, um, you know, uh, M- the MLP comics and stuff. And I actually gave my card to him for whatever, for his comics, because he has his own independent comics, too. And I'm like, it, it was a weird feeling, but it was a good feeling. And uh, I'm really happy with how that uh, transpired. And then there was a concert uh, that had my boss, uh, DA Games, singing there with Jonathan Young and um, Caleb Hiles, who are these two YouTube cover artist musicians that I absolutely adore. They do, Jonathan does these awesome, like, metal covers of Disney songs, and Caleb is just a fantastic singer. Um, I cannot stop playing their music whenever they release a new cover. I, like, listen to it 20 times before I stop listening to it. And they are the nicest people in the world. Like, I got to talk and hang out with them. And now they both follow me on Twitter. So, hooray. Um, and they nice. Like my, they like my art and say it's distinct. And they and they think I'm a delightful person. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> You networker, you are disgusting. I'm, 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 you, you, you are totally, like, abusing them, I have the feeling. <sighs> this is, no, nobody is this good at, ne- at networking. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> I know exactly how you're. <laughs> God damn it. Um, but besides that, we uh, I I missed the co-optional podcast panel, which pissed me off. No, that's why you couldn't catch Jesse's wig for me. Yeah. You I had got, one job besides making I got connections and. Off to the aquarium and stuff, and I hated the. F- it was like I said, this is the one thing I want to go to, and well, nope. But I did go to the co-optional lounge the next day, which Haven't was watched it yet. But yeah. Which was which was a lot of fun. I really want to get it that. It usually oil. is. It usually is. They uh, watching a bunch of very entertaining people by nature play. I assume this time as well interactive board games. Uh, well, they were they played Super Fight Super Villain Edition, which is an and interactive board game with social aspects. I assume. Uh, well, they basically their interaction with the audience is that we had to ch- whoever got the loudest cheering was the one who won. Oh, okay. That I, I guess I have to watch it to get it, and you guys do um, as well. But they also played a game called Snake Oil, where you have to sell fake products to. Uh, these different customers, like they have different customers on the card, mm-hmm. like zombie, witch, uh, sailor, blah, 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 blah. And you have these cards and you have to pick two random words and make that into a product and you have 30 seconds to pitch it. It was so funny. And um, I would definitely recommend people watch the MomoCon co-optional lounge thing because it was so good. And just say, TB is looking really good. Yeah. Like, Like, it's scary how good he looks. I mean, he is stubborn. He is stubborn as hell. He might have... I, 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 res- I give mad props to the stubborn as hell. Yeah, I mean, this guy has terminal cancer and he goes to conventions and whatnot and looks really good. I mean, when I saw him at uh, CoxCon last year, he had basically this Deadpool face because some medication issues. And, and now, when you look at him recently, he is full of energy. His skin is clean again. This guy is a monster. He actually looks really f- fit too yeah. like not like scary skinny or like fat he's fit and it's like this is weird yeah uh, i mean he will probably be like uh, at least four or five more years here even though the doctors only gave him two but yeah i mean there I, there have been wrong diagnoses before true true stubborn people survive really crazy things but yeah fingers crossed for him oh uh, one of my favorite panels though was called the Pearl Secret Rap Career Panel. Let me explain. They had so much of the cast of Steven Universe there. They had the voice of Connie, uh, Steven, Pearl, Amethyst, Peridot, and Lapis. It was, they had so many Steven Universe cast there. 
But, like, this panel just had uh, the voice of Pearl, Dee Dee Mungo, and Zach Callis in the voice of Steven. And it had MK Atwood, who's this YouTuber who makes these hilarious edits of Steven Universe stuff. And the most famous of their series is called Pearl's Secret Rap Career. Because the voice actress for Pearl was in this um, music group. And they had, a, they had a song called, I think, L.A. or Party or something. And the voice actor for Pearl had a rap verse in it. <laughs> and it sounds like Pearl. So she took, so the series of videos is basically Steven discovering Pearl's secret rap, and then Paradox discovering it, Lapis discovering it, the Cluster discovering it, <laughs> then the world discovering it. It's great. It's and it's so amazingly yet, out of character it. for her. It's great. And what they did is that they had uh, Dee Dee, Zach, MK Atwood, and uh, Dwayne, who is this person who runs the Cartoon Network social media. I'll explain why he's there later. And the entire panel was Zach and MK explaining, MK's real name is Mackenzie, mm -hmm. explaining to Dee Dee what memes are because she's a 35-year-old oh. mom who doesn't know what memes are. I mean, not even I who knows very well what a meme is can really explain it you, it you have great you have to oh, see it you you this is you have oh, to but it was it was so funny though i guess like they so. were showing they were showing um they were showing some fan stuff from the the, the pearl secret rap career like what has some people made then they showed different examples of memes like they had that dog that goes bork like the weird white little dog and then uh the uh you've stepped into the wrong neighborhood, like a bunch of different memes. And, uh, and then they showed the trailer for, it's already, the trailer's already out, so it's not spoilers, for Steven's secret rap career, where Steven's just like, I didn't know that Pearl was a rap legend. I'll show you all. I'm gonna drop the edgiest rap. And it has the actual voice of Steven in it, voicing Steven. Okay. And, this is where the amazing part of the panel comes in, because then Dwayne starts talking. Apparently, MK Atwood has been working for Cartoon Network for months, and what Cartoon Network is doing now is that they're actually looking at the works of fan content makers, the people who make edits, fan animations, and all and music remixes and stuff, to come help with the channel so Cartoon Network can actually have this bigger connection with people. Hmm. That's what I find so um, it's such a step in the right direction that they're actually seeing these talented people online and instead of trying to silence them and censor them, encourage them, and actually, them. yeah, and actually allow them to to use original voices and so on. Yeah, that's, that's what a I cool found development. So amazing. Yeah, I mean, you look at other companies uh, um, uh, send out uh, what a DCM, seats and assists, whatever. He's Decent yeah, but some some companies manage to get worth the time. I'm very happy for that, indeed. Uh, and especially since it's Cartoon Network, which was my channel growing up. I'm a Cartoon Network kid. While I did watch Nick and Disney, Cartoon Network was my station. So seeing them do take this step in the right direction, I'm like... I personally hey. preferred RTL2. You're German, you don't count. Oh, shush you. You are just racist. Shut up, you call me janky. How is that not racist? Because that's what you are and I just pointed out while you actually deform me publicly for the fact shut that up. I am German. <laughs> Fine, I'm not going to say shut up to you because you're German. I'm going to say shut up to you because you're Max. I am still feel feeling like a suppressed minority, <laughs> but please continue. Anyways. <laughs> Momocon. Uh, besides that, like... There, this con was, let me just say, this con was huge. I think there was maybe 20, 22,000 people there okay. over and, the course of the four days. Momocon is actually kind of a mediocre-sized anime convention, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's not a huge convention, but compared to the other cons I've been to that where the cap is like 10,000, this was big to me. Yeah, I guess so. But, like... Now I need to find I mean, out what your how many people are at Euroference, but please continue while I search for it. Point being, um, it was so huge, so many freaking cosplays. But some of the cosplays were like for weird things that I didn't expect people to make cosplays of. Like you expect the Sailor Scouts, you know. You always expect that in an anime convention. You expect the 
Bleach, the Naruto's, the the, the there was a Death Note cosplay of L. I was so happy about that. Um, then they they had one of Light with the, the guy, and he was holding a bag of potato chips the whole time, and I'm like. Hey. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and finally you get the reference you are welcome you're right. welcome but then there was like oh speaking of which they had like disney cosplayers like they had all the disney princesses they had kaida kita from um atlantis they had moana there were people as maui with his giant hook there was ben 10 like they even had stuff from like they had a coup from Samurai Jack. Like, someone made, like, this statue-looking um, cosplay with, like, these movable arms and stuff. You had Steven Universe stuff. You had Lapis and um, a lot of Paradox, a lot of Rose Quartz and Steven. Yeah, you have to, you, you, I, I have to say, the, those kind of conventions are probably a lot more diverse than uh, in regards to especially cosplaying than, yeah, for example, furry conventions, which usually have also a wide variety of cosplays but they're all within most of them are within the furry spectrum so uh yeah this is kind you of have... limiting brony conventions the same thing you see a lot of ponies running yeah. around big surprise yeah you had a lot of harleys um jokers you actually had some uh, some more lesser known justice league characters like you had huntress and the, there was one couple who went as huntress and the question from justice league unlimited oh beautiful like, i was like yes i love this um you had black canaries you had um you actually did not have a lot of batman surprisingly <laughs> You had a they, lot they, of they have, no, 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 the thing, is, the thing is, there were like hundreds of Batmans, but they were so good at hiding in the shadows that you couldn't because see them. Because they're Batman. <laughs> Batman. They, but, yeah, they had like all these different costumes and stuff, Street Fighters, video games and everything. I was like, this is so sensory overload of cool. Um, but, like, uh, then... That they had like DDR machines. They had board game tables so people could just play board games and card games and stuff. At the vendors alley, they had more than just prints and stuff. They had like cosplay items. There was one table that sold nothing but old Nintendo, PlayStation, and Genesis stuff, and Famicom too. And I was like, this is this is awesome. I got a golden uh, Oracle of Time from or Oracle of Ages from there, like, which is one of the Zelda Game Boy games. And I'm like, <laughs> this place is so cool. Um, but yeah, there was a bunch of that stuff. My personal highlights is, uh, <laughs> uh, I created a meme at that con. Oh my. And I'm proud of myself. Uh, because at the first YouTubers concert that had Jonathan, uh, Caleb, and Will, um, not the Wilsonator, mind you, DA Games Will, uh, I sh ever, uh, Jonathan was like, how was that after one of his performances? And everyone's cheering and stuff, and I waited to like quiet down, and I just shouted, you're all right! And he pointed it out. <laughs> and then they had a smaller concert at, um, on Sunday. And I was there sitting in the front row, and I had my sketchbook with me, so I wrote, you're all right, on the paper and held it up in the air, and everyone... Everyone was like, they they stopped on stage to laugh because nice. they were like, and I got the crowd to cheer, you're all right, you're all right. And then the, there was the, uh, a lesser one, um, I put Sing Wonderwall. Oh, also there. nice. <laughs> and they, and guys, Caleb guys, this is a thing you all need to know. Whenever you go to a concert and there is a possibility to shout in a request or to or you just see a chance to shout in, even though it's not requested. Always ask for Wonderwall. Always. This was... Yeah. It, it, it's the um, greatest present you can make to any musician with a little bit of self-respect, shouting at them to play Wonderwall. They will love you for it, believe me. <laughs> yeah, but um, when at, near the end they were doing autographs and stuff, and I just went up there to talk to them for a bit and stuff, and they were like, "Oh, Chrissy, it's a or Key, they call me Key. It's so good to see you." And I gave uh, I gave Caleb a Sunset Shimmer and a Fluttershy print because they, him and his wife love Sunset and Fluttershy, and he was like, 
oh thank you so like he was so happy and I was like oh and then I gave and then I was like Jonathan I got something special for you I gave him the piece of paper that says you're all right and his face lit up like a Christmas tree he was like oh thank you I was like, it's just you're all right <laughs> and, uh, and uh, but it was it, it was great and I felt I felt a twinge in my heart <laughs> like and I when you came soul. back, you were uh, knocked out for a few days with days with corn crabs. Good oh, job. Yeah. I, the last But couple yeah. days of the con, I was vomiting, and then I was like, maybe it's just stress. Isn't and this the most beautiful? I came beautiful. home and I was like, nope, it's sick. It's still corn crabs. Isn't this the most beautiful way to end this beautiful anecdote about uh, Monocon? <laughs> and yeah, probably it was, a, yeah. it was a fun convention, and that took. A long time because it was a long con. Yeah. Anyway, how was your week? How was my week? Uh, I actually have uh, two basic highlights. I mean, I didn't get out, so it's uh, not too much. But yeah, two big things happened this week. Thing number one is I officially started my new training program. Uh, not so much yet with actual new a new workout routine. However, my new diet started and I took to uh, uh, write down measurements in order to be able to compare them. Um, but yeah, my new diet, it's, it's beautiful. So basically, I, uh, no, uh, I don't eat anything with uh, sugar anymore. I don't eat anything with... Um, Uh, uh, so sugar is basically already half of the stuff I ate before um, mm -hmm. and dr drunk. So drinking water and green tea, basically. Uh, I don't eat any bread anymore because it has uh, stout in it. And everything with stout, potatoes are out of as well. Fried stuff. I mean, uh, fried stuff in a pan is okay, but not deep fried. Like, no, not deep fried. Like, like not like uh, fries. You, uh, you, I can still uh, cook something in a pan, but not, uh, is it deep fried? Deep fried. Yeah, yeah, no KFC, it. basically. Yeah, yeah, basically no KFC, um, but still eating, quant uh, but still trying to eat a bigger quantity in general because I need to gain weight, but I need to gain the right kind of weight because sugar and do uh, and um, uh, 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 stouch and stuff have the issue that they have a lot of energy but they're also in a very tight and in case of sugar even crystallized form which means there's a lot of energy necessary to break them apart which makes them kind of a zero balance thing with what you actually gain from them so yeah I my now day in and day out I eat rice and chicken and vegetables and drink water and isn't this beautiful Uh, however, I actually have already, and, and eat more eggs and stuff. Uh, however, I have actually already gained like two or three kilogram. Uh, and it's not just a belly. <laughs> just, it's not just the belly. <laughs> But yeah, imagine, everybody, imagine living on this. This is, it, this is only day two or three or something. And I mean, that doesn't sound too bad to me. As well, long as I get to eat chicken. Yeah, but yeah, this is I, the, the plan is to do this for 12 weeks. This means three months of this diet, uh, which will be especially tricky since in between I'm coming over to America to a convention and I have to figure out how to at least don't stray away from my diet too much. But yeah, it's unrealistic to keep this going during a convention and doing 10 do hours. Do not have cheat days in this plan? Obviously, I have cheat days like one per week, but one per week is not enough for an entire week. <laughs> also, okay, oh, no alcohol, obviously, also. Oh, no wine? No wine. But oh. yeah, also there, uh, my second big event is that I, uh, something arrived at the post. And I will even show it and put it on the big screen for the people watching at home. Well, this didn't work. Uh, now this should work better. So mm -hmm. yeah, even you people watching it on YouTube, there's something to see for you now. Oh boy. Oh boy, indeed. Due to copyright reasons, I will just sing it and not uh, actually play it. But what I uh -huh. want to say is, Hey Ada, hey Ada, da 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 da, hey Ada. Hey, I still Ada, don't think that song is good for lip sync battle, dude. Da 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 da. Ah, it's you, you look you look great. I know I do, and this jacket is helping as well. But yeah, I I I went crazy two weeks ago and was like, I want to have a Star Lord jacket. 
And, well, I got myself a Star Lord jacket. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, uh, not not cheap material, like actual good quality leather. Uh, totally worth it. Totally worth it. <laughs> and I may be getting a Star Lord jacket because there's no good jackets for Gamora. Ah, uh, but. No, th this pissed me off. There's no good, not even from the first Guardians movie. There's just not a good Gamora jacket. So yeah, I'm like, I mean, fine, I'll get Star Lord. Yeah, I mean, you sent me a few links and I checked them out, like zooming into the pictures they put on eBay, and it was like, ooh, this doesn't look like good production. Ooh, this material looks crap. But yeah. No regrets, no at all. <laughs> it was Good either this, I, I, I was actually kind of in between between this jacket and a Hawkeye jacket from Avengers uh, Age of Ultron. Um, I was basically at the point where I was like, okay, I just get both. But then I once again did the like looking very closely, comparing it very directly to pictures of uh, Hawkeye and I realized... This jacket actually, it, it was still done with good material because I would, if, if, if I buy this kind of stuff, I want it to look good. I would not buy this cheap costume clothes. Um, all this thin stuff that doesn't, doesn't look authentic unless you are like 10 kilometers away and looking from there. Um, but yeah, the, the thing with the hawk, I was like, they tried to emulate it, but they didn't go all the way. So where he has some kind of um, uh, 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 additional, uh, what's it called? Uh, in, the, in the middle of the belt, you have to open it. The buckle? Yeah, the buckle. They, he has some kind of random buckles uh, on the side of his um, uh, uh, um, chest. And mm -hmm. they just replaced those those strings, uh, strings and bub uh, buckles with those plastic uh, click thingies. Mm. No, still good material, still kind of the same thing, but at the end of the day, it was not. It, it didn't reach the level of authenticness I'm looking for when I put cash on the table to get uh, awesome cosplay stuff, like my Gandalf costume, which I will show you next week if I can remember. Oh boy! But one costume per. Uh, and I can do the Wizard Gandalf style. Bow, 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 bow. Wizard Gandalf style. Hey, where's my hobbit? Hey. Stop, <laughs> Sorry. stop, stop, stop. Please stop right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, those were the two big highlights of my week. Uh, beyond this, work as usual. I released a video, I, an actual scripted video edited by myself. I, I, I'm still, I'm still like, like uh, riding the euphoria, and I still have stuff in in progress, which is still uh, uh, shocking for me. Like, are my, is my channel having a revival? Not only the podcast, but also other content. I don't know. Me but neither. Helping, but you can, all, but all of you both. can, can I'm find out. I'm helping out with both ends. So. Yeah. And all of you can find out by yourself if the uh, Ain't White channel will have a revival. Tune in, subscribe and like, and you will see more. Subscribe, turn on the bell because YouTube's algorithms will oh, stop you good from point. seeing subboxes. Good point. You use, use the freaking bell symbol. I never asked for it, but now I did. Click the bell so you get a notification in the top right of your screen whenever I upload something. I only did this for two people because as a content producer, you get a belt for every comment you get. So I already have a few belts every day. Not as many as I would have if I would still have a, 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 a live channel. But still, I have a few belts every day. And it's like, oh, there's a new bell. Who? so excited. Somebody comment. Oh, it's just another video uploaded by somebody. So I, I myself only use the belt by one or two people. Then again, I don't need it because I actually always go to my subscription page on YouTube. I never go to the home page. When I type in YouTube in my browser, it already completes the URL to subs whatever it is, my subscriptions or something. You, I just yeah. put in you, like Y-O-U, and it also is like youtube.com slash feed slash subscriptions. Mm -hmm. Right, right above YouTube slash my underscore videos uh, O equals U. It doesn't even. Oh, okay. There's and the third one is actually YouTube.com. But yeah, I don't even go to the freaking homepage because YouTube doesn't know what I want. I want my subscriptions, and I can see them there. 
Oh, there was one thing I forgot, and oh. I guess this can go into my media. Okay, um, good save, good save. I did buy a couple things for myself at this con. Mm. Um, two things were two little uh, prints posters that I got. What made me remember is you talking about your new workout diet thingy. Mm -hmm. Because, like, I actually started this new thing. I started yesterday and I continued today. Because, like I was saying in the pre-show, I'm still trying to do some working out. I'm d trying to do 500 crunches a week as a starting thing. So let me guess, something from Dan Danbero Nankiro Moteteru? Is that the person who made the Buff Bunny picture? No. That's, uh, no. that's the comic, this is, this is the, an the name oh, of the anime the, 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 of the workout the anime, girls. The hot, anime, the hot anime girls doing exercises? Yes, with actual workout advice, where we, by the way, I figured this out afterwards, this one of doing the plank image we found on Tumblr ages ago, which we actually both used as instructions to learn how to do the prank, uh, plank properly. Yeah? It's from this comic! Well, awesome. But anyway, yeah, I, I'm doing this thing where I do 500 crunches a week. So I do 100 crunches a day and it's 10 different, um, 10 different crunches. Like there's the basic ones and the reverse ones and all that stuff. And it ends with a plank, which I don't know how that counts as a crunch. It's just an abdominal exercise, but K, you know, but, um, one, I bought two workout motivation posters that, of course, are both Judy from Zootopia. Huh. Um, one of them is doing uh, the Rosie, the Riveter thing, being like, we can do it. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, I like that one. And then there was one that has, that's a very cute one that has uh, Judy lifting up Nick and it says <laughs> buff bun. And I'm like, I, I want I want to be buff bun. So I bought that one and I, I now have them hanging in my bedroom to remind me to do my crunches. Cause I'm still not well enough to go out to my gym to do the cardio mm. and strength training stuff, but doing and doing crunches, those things hurt after doing a hundred of them. Which I guess means so. they're working, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from, what I've been, from what I've been seeing, uh, what I've been seeing, because I research people starting five, you see results after a week, like not um, you suddenly mm -hmm. get abs on, obviously, it's, but it's, you start seeing it's, stuff. It's also, uh, also like with so many things in life, kind of an 80-20 rule. So the first 80% of whatever you try to reach usually get, can be achieved with 20% of the effort and the last 20 uh, pr the last 20% take you 80% of the effort, which is basically when you start working out from a zero, like you have no, you had no previous routine. So the progress you will see will be amazing in the beginning. And then to, to reach the, the one step further will be like, eh, grinding. This is basically. Well, I mean, I already have a routine. Mm. I'm adding the crunches to Yeah, the but routine. I mean, like in the in the stomach department, it was basically a new start. And I mean, this is this is actually a very good thing that it works like this because it motivates you in the beginning when you try to get into it. And once you are into it, you probably can even continue with uh, less progress. So I, I, I would say nature did something right there. I'm, I'm proud of you, nature. Good job, nature. But either way, the other thing that I bought was that at, because it's in Atlanta, Cartoon Network is based in Atlanta. So they had a Cartoon Network store and I bought a little Scooby plushie. I left Ooh. that Scooby plushie at a restaurant and never went back to get it. No. So I did the logical thing and bought another Scooby plushie. <laughs> I am I'm not entirely sure if I should be proud or disappointed. Uh, be proud. <laughs> I named it Scoobert. Um, but like, uh, either way, my media thing actually has to do with Cartoon Network. Um, right before this podcast, actually, Ooh. I watched Saber Sparks' new video about the history of Cartoon Network. Ah, oh yeah, he, and does, he does a lot of interesting stuff with those, those in-depth... I totally recommend everyone to go watch that video. Because this year I actually... will put it in the description if you remind me. This is act. This video is actually um, not this video. This year will actually be, if I'm correct, the 25th anniversary of Cartoon Network. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I remember when they did their 20th anniversary. Like it's 
Uh, uh, it may be the 25th. I need to look. I'm going to look that up while I'm talking so I can fact check myself. What? But, uh, you damn multitasker. Oh, shut up. You were the one looking up the attendance rate of Euro for instance. I know. That's why I basically pass the ball to you that I can look it up because I'm not multitasking. So I need you to, to, to fill the gaps in my own anecdote so I can look up stuff. By the way, the attention rate of Euro Ferns is actually only like two and a half thousand. So yeah, and I thought I was at big convention. So no, I, 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 I am still like a convention vir virgin when it uh, comes to size. Okay, so it's not the 25th anniversary, but it will be, you know, An coming anniversary. up. Just, come, it's, it's, twen, it's 24 now. It's going to be 25 next year. Ah, okay, I see. Point being, it's, uh, or is it this year? I gotta do the math. It came out in 1992, so this year, this year would be 25, yeah. right? Yeah, Okay, it, it says 24 on the wiki because it's not October 1st yet. <laughs> You oh, janky point. and your numbers. I, I'm a janky, I know. Point being, you know, I grew up with this network. And I grew up during a lot of its, um, a lot of its newer phases. Like, I was, I started, I mean, I watched it since I was a little kid. So I was probably during the CN City era, 2001 onwards kind of thing when they were at the height of them having original programming, the cartoon cartoons. And the video itself is actually super interesting of how it started out. Because it's, because, it, um, not to say the whole video. Wait, but it's, how it's an older one, to, isn't it? What, the state, Cartoon Network? No, 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 the video, Saber's video is no, an older one. No, this is a new video. A recent it's, one. It's, yeah, okay, it's because the of Cartoon Network. Because I could swear he did something similar a while get pr uh, back, probably from a different angle, where he was also going through all the phases I, and uh, uh, and I think eras. They, I think he was talking about what's it's from his What's Ruining series or What huh. Ruined or okay. whatever. But this is like the history of Cartoon Network and seeing how it went from basically a station that would do nothing but rerun um, Hanna Barbera <laughs> post fifties Warner Brothers and MGM stuff to having original programming, to its dark ages when it didn't try to introduce live action stuff into the 24 hour cartoon, cartoon network, to where it is now. And you see how much history was made with it. And it, it's very interesting to see the, the highs and the lows and the dips and the falls and how much original stuff came from there. Cause while I respect Nick, because Nick was Nick was that you know first big station, the station for kids. Cartoon Network always has a higher opinion in my book because since its conception, even before it came out with the Adult Swim block, because keep in mind Adult Swim, which is where Rick and Morty and stuff comes from, was not something that originally was with the channel. I mean, it's also where Robot Chicken came from. Yeah, Robot Chicken. I think there was a, there's so. a lot of great stuff that has a. Adult Swim logo at the beginning. Yeah. It wasn't one of the original th stations. Mm. But one of the things that um, t Ted Turner and people who ran the station kept in mind is that just as much as kids like cartoons, adults like cartoons too. That's why we had stuff like um, Space Goes Coast to Coast, which was its first really big programming thing. And how in the later times they would be a little bit more adult oriented. And then that's what brought the conception of Toonami to bring anime, some of which, you know, would not fit kids standards. And then the adult swim block and stuff. And seeing that and seeing what? how anime much... there's anime that is not fit for kids. My God, I just sent my uh, nephew, my three-year-old nephew, uh, an access to Crunchyroll Unlimited. I don't know, does Crunchyroll even have the, not, the, the, the nasty stuff? Well, I mean, it doesn't have hentai, but it, I don't know. There but, is a very uh, fluent descent in anime from, okay, d nice d stuff. It, it, I mean, if it has food wars, you can count that. I mean, it, 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 it I mean, look. We can all agree that, for example, Sailor Moon is probably harmless, right? But yeah. the further you go, the, 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 the shorter the skirts uh, uh, get, or at least the camera angles go a little bit more a little bit lower. pointy. And 
then at some point it just is like okay are we just very naughty or are we already in uh, hentai territory it's a very fluent concept so i mean or it could be uh, like food wars where people eat food and, and then their poof. clothes come off i still haven't watched it but i i hear jesse freak out over it so much i probably but, have to yeah. watch food wars at some point point be point being if anyone is any kind of enthusiast of TV animation, it, I would say go watch the history of Cartoon Network because even how much people rag on Cartoon Network for when it did try to do the CN real live action stuff or um, Teen Titans Go and things, you can't deny that in leaps and bounds in how it's progressed over the years, it has a much better track record than Nickelodeon. <laughs> than stuff like Nickelodeon or the Disney Channel. Not Disney itself, but the Disney Channel. And I just think it's a really cool video. As, as someone who grew up with Cartoon Network, I absolutely adore it. So yeah, that was my media. How about you? How about me? For once, we finally have different kinds of media to talk about. Cool. Uh, I tried, actually, I wanted, this was my plan, um, uh, for this show to watch the B-movie. I haven't seen the B-movie yet, but I have it on Netflix. Know, it is my in my list. Oh my it's me. in my watch list. I haven't seen it yet. I still haven't watched it. So it might be my topic for next week, uh, uh, unless something more, uh, more, more, more awesome, even more fantastic than the B-movie might come up. I don't know. <laughs> oh God, I, I will also try to watch it very immediately before the podcast so that my emotions whatever they might be after watching it are still very fresh i want to watch i want to be in a skype call to hear your reactions to it because oh my god watching I love... the b movie <laughs> but, yes yeah please let that be a thing this, this, this might happen next week uh this oh, week uh, uh, other <laughs> stuff happened Obviously, yeah. I continued playing StarCraft and watching Dr. House. <laughs> There's nothing new on that front. Gosh, you are exciting. <laughs> I know, isn't it brilliant? But, but, but. Um, for some reason, I have now, no why, I probably got sick of StarCraft and Dr. House. Yeah. <laughs> for reasons I don't know. Could be because it was the only thing I consumed for the last three weeks media-wise. Um, mm -hmm. I went through my Steam library and I was like, okay, I, I, I have no interest in StarCraft at the moment, so let's see what's in my Steam, Steam library. And um, f f well, also with Darkest Dungeon, I'm on my low again. I look like it's like, it's a brilliant game. I just started playing it again, but I don't feel like playing it now. Like, like, like the guy uh, or the, cli the, the cliche girl standing in front of uh, her... A, a giant walk-in uh, wardrobe full Love of shoes and, and, and being like, I have no, no shoes to wear. Uh, I, I'm basically the same thing with my games in uh, uh, Steam. Uh, I'm like, I have nothing to play among my 150 games. But yeah, I scrolled down a little bit and I came across uh, one I really loved when I first played it, uh, which is... Oh, God damn it! Did I really forget the name of the game I played for the last two days? Let me fire up stream. I believe it's Renown Explorers is the name of it. It's a very, it's an indie and kind of uh, under the radar title, which I only know about because Total Biscuit played it and praised it and did a WTF on it. And yeah, it's known, it's, it's called Renown Explorers Intern, uh, International Society. And I will put the link to Total Biscuit's um, WTF uh, of it in the description as well. So you guys can get your own impression if this game might be down your alley as well. But yeah, I, I started it up, then I was kind of on like, uh, like, hmm, there are two extensions for it. Oh, this could have been the thing that the ext extent extensions of the game have been on sale. Maybe this was the reason that sparked my interest again. Um, so I got the two extensions for it. And while I was on it, there was also a package deal to get the game of Rios, which I will probably say a, a word about as well. Um, but yeah. Um, uh, Renown Explorers is really, once again, check out for, for footage and more in-depth stuff because we're already quite of late. I need to, f to wrap this up quickly. Um, it's 
turn-based. So if you are like, oh, I don't play turn-based at all, then you, know, you can already you know, check it out at least after all, at least you really, really hate turn-based. But it's turn-based light strategy, so it's no uh, big one like Command & Conquer, what is it, 4S or something is it called? 4, 4 G, 4 S, 4 C, whatever. It's not, uh, you have basically this group of very eccentric original characters, or some of them are also parodies, so maybe not too original, uh, but all of them are unique, at least in the rooster of the game, like like four times five to six or something, so you have like 20 characters you can choose and pick it combines them and you always play with a trio of characters and they have different uh, abilities and it's kind of a, a scissor rock paper principle with uh, attack combinations like you can attack with friendliness you can attack with deviousness and you can attack with uh, 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 force with actually punching them and depending on how in which mood y your opponent is you are and your gameplay is and where your strengths are and in which order you play attacks they all have different uh, combinations. Uh, I'm a complete simpleton when I play it, so I'm like, okay, this time I play the aggressive run-through and I, I only only use aggressive punches. But actually, if you twist in, in mid-battle, in mid like the attack pattern you use, you actually get kind of big bonuses on when you are in a, both sides are aggressive, and you are in a both an aggressive mood, you basically get a bonus of 20% damage on the next devious move, something like this. And if you actually watch for this, there is a lot of depth in strategy you can use in this game. Once again, I'm a simpleton, I just play it on the most basic level and it's still fun, it's still fun. There's a nice feel to it. Um, something with, uh, while you ba more or less visit the same locations when you replay it, it still feels um, interesting enough to come back. So if you like those kind of games where you are like, hey, I want to play a session of this today, it's a good one for that. Uh, an another one, Rios, which I kind of bought because it's from the same um, uh, producer company and they sold it in a bundle with the add-ons for Renown Explorers, is Rios, which also, I guess, I can also, I, I checked it out, a video on YouTube, I like it, it has a very, very intriguing concept and also a lot of depth to actually go into. There was just one little thing that kind of put me off. You always start with a complete blank world. You always start with a complete blank slate. You basically, it's a, it's a world builder game. And because it's always the same size of a world and it's always a blank slate and you always can basically do the exact same things and probably to more or less the same effect. It kind of was like, eh, uh, for, for me. It In theory, there's a lot of depth I have not yet explored because with it, each replay, you actually unlock stuff. But because the starting setup is always the same, I something in my head doesn't like this. It's, it's not a very objective thing, so I can imagine, I can imagine that other people will have the same issue with it I have, but I can also imagine that a lot of people will be like, what's anyway's problem? This doesn't bother me at all. So um, I, I would say check out a video about Reos and see if this might sound interesting and uh, give it a, uh, 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 check it out on a, when it's on sale or something. I mean, it's, I believe, base price 10 bucks or something and with a sale you get it for a few. Um, yeah, and I believe we both have talked about our last weekend of media, didn't we? Yep. So we can actually dive into this big amount of questions we actually have for once. Yeah, can you link me the doc? I, uh, of course, I can link you the document where we save all the questions that people send to us throughout the week on Twitter with the hashtag AnyKeyQuestions or in replies to the uh, video to the previous podcast where I see them in my comment uh, no, uh, notifications. Uh, or live right now in the chat during watching this on Thursday late afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. Well, I'm going to pick the first question. Oh, you're picking the first question, okay. Yeah. What is your favorite song from Steven Universe? Where is this question? I don't even see this. It's in the dock. Really? God damn it. Uh, both of us? I assume both of us. Yes, both of us. Uh, you picked it, you go first. 
probably, hmm. I would say the, uh, here comes a thought from the, uh, uh, the, I don't remember the name of the episode, mm. but it's the episode where they where uh, Garnet helps Devani with balancing thoughts in the head ah. in, um, mm-hmm. in their head with their collective minds, and it had all the butterflies. and I really love that song. It's so chill, and it's it's actually a very good song to listen to when you're someone with anxiety because it uh, it helps you ground yourself, which is something that ex- people with anxiety like I do need to do half the time is try to ground yourself in your head because sometimes you feel like you're just kind of drowning or you're flying up in the air. So I really like that song. Uh, yeah, and sadly we don't even know who asked this question because we accidentally cut off the asker. So sorry, person, we forgot to credit for the question. Uh, my personal one, the problem is I'm not listening intensively enough to Steven Universe soundtracks and re-listening songs, so I have a very bad grasp on the songs that are actually in it. So I probably have, by default, to go with the song I can actually remember, <laughs> which is uh, um, the Garnet song from the uh, end of the first season. Which Stronger was- than you. Stronger than you, yeah. I probably have to go yeah. with this one. Is this the same you picked? No. Mine oh, thank is goodness. From, mine is from season three. Because you said something about Stefani, and I was like, whew. Okay. Um, yeah, whew, you picked different <laughs> songs, thank goodness. Yeah, uh, this one stuck because of you for once, and other people brought it up uh, on occasions, and so uh, I paid more attention to it. There are probably other and uh, other amazing songs in it, uh, but yeah, I, I just have a crappy memory, and I can't recall them. Well, you know what can help with that crappy memory? In June, they're releasing a full Steven Universe soundtrack. I am so buying that. <laughs> uh, uh, do, do, do as you, do, do your thing, do. Do it. Okay, I have a question for you, particularly. Oh, okay. From somebody with the, by the name of uh, Tu On uh, Cry Tick. Okay. Y2K. And, oh, no. and there's also oh there's also a second name which is cold of personality i i, I don't oh, really get it okay. and uh, mm-hmm. the question uh, this weird person i totally don't know who might this be asks uh, on a scale from one to ten how much did a and y treat you like a princess when you visited is there a number less than negative ten um <laughs> i mean no okay to be to be transparent, you didn't treat me badly. I had a great time. But yeah, I'm not the person who carries other people on their hands. <laughs> yeah, but like, I, and I'm not the type of person who really enjoys that kind of behavior either. But we had, we had a good time, but that's not a good rating system. So go away, Toon. Stop asking questions. Your questions are the bad questions. No, Toon, continue asking questions. If they are really what? bad, we can still ignore them. Be weird, shippy things. I don't know. <laughs> it, it it can it it, it can uh, it can basically uh, shine a spotlight on me making you do the dishes while I'm at work. I cleaned your house all the time while you were at work. Really? You did more than the dishes? Shit. <laughs> yeah, I, thought I, vacu- I vacuumed and sweeped your floors and cleaned your computer desk all the time. Really? Yes. Huh. That one time that you found me, like, passed out on the, passed out on the couch was because I just cleaned your whole house. <laughs> so, Toon, if you would have asked, did Keyframe treat me like a princess while she was here? Yes, she did. Christ. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, from Biter. Have you guys seen the new season of Samurai Jack or Boku no Hero Academia? Thoughts? Uh, I'm still trying to catch up to Samurai Jack. I'm still somewhere stuck in the early season two of the original show, and I want to watch chronologically because I'm weird like this. Uh, I've I... seen the full. I've seen the new season. Ah, okay. I'm happy. That's good to know. It, it did. It did what it what I wanted it to do. It made me happy. There are some people who aren't happy, and I'm just saying, 
Moss U, we finally got closure after 14 years. Be <sighs> happy with what you got. <laughs> <sighs> uh, yeah, and uh, however you pronounce the other one, The Hero Academy, uh, it's an anime. I started watching it. I be I watched it actually like when it came out, uh, like like one episode per week, and that's a problem. I cannot recall to watch stuff on a weekly basis. So is that that? Is it that witch show that you show me on Netflix? No, 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 no. It's uh, uh, this is a uh, Little Witch Academy, uh, which is about witches going to an academy. No, the Baku no Haki Duki Hero Academy is actually an anime. About about a world in which every second person has actually a gene which gives them superhero abilities. Kind of like X-Men, but totally not like X-Men because they are not um, uh, outcasts and uh, uh, minority and suppressed. No, they are just regular there. And they all, it, being a hero or being a villain is basically a, a, an actual job. And they have b a big academy, which is, you will guess, the uh, 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 place where all this happens, where young people with uh, supernatural abilities can be trained to become heroes. And it's a very fun show. It's at the same time an homage to those kind of uh, shonen anime, but it, kind of, it still works on itself. It doesn't feel like just another shonen anime. Kind of, uh, it, 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 on the one hand, it's a little bit meta. On the other hand, it's also just the the feel the feel of shonen anime itself and then on the next level it is also kind of homage to it and not falling for all the typical tropes but playing with them it's it's i love it i did not actively stop watching it i just was an idiot and uh i i missed a few episodes and i watched three at once and i forgot it again and probably by now the second season started and I, i'm like blah, blah i mean attack on titan the second season has started and i haven't seen a single episode yet I'm mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a bad otaku, bad bad otaku. You should you should look at the que the two questions Def Alchemist left because they were both good questions. Uh, I will in a moment. Uh, uh, I just need to. <laughs> Katarina Hood had something to say in the chat about uh, uh, you treating me like a princess, or rather, oh, what, what did, hey, what and did why you, you ungrateful little shit? <laughs> wow. <laughs> go back to your hot topic hot topic filled closet and listen to my chemical romance on high why don't you christ but she had when closed down but at the end of the day she has a point doesn't she <laughs> i mean kind of but jesus <laughs> I'm sorry, that was my only excuse that I could do my edgy teenager rants because there's not many people I can do those to anymore. You need more edgy teenagers in your life. I mean, I could call Kichi an edgy teenager. She acts like it. <sighs> but you are such a but... normie, such a normal person. You are so average. She Okay, if she's our daughter, then doesn't that make her half normie? Ooh, shots are fired. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Don't also, choose mommy, dearest. But, also, okay. a shit question. Uh, Kylie Del Pozzi asks a &Y, have you ever thought about doing another Drew the Squad meme? Yes, yes, indeed. I have a few more templates on my uh, 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 hard drive. But I yeah. I, I feel like by the time like my birthday or something rolls around, you're just going to do one of those Draw the Squad things as like my birthday present. <laughs> I would actually really like that. That would be funny. <laughs> but yeah, you said there were ones I should pick. Oh, no, I was what saying was... the Duff Alchemist one actually had a... The first question oh. is actually a good question. The second ah. one, I I have a lot... To, I, can, I have something to say about that. Okay, Duff Alchemist, ask uh, f uh, two questions. First, what is your guy's limit on what kind of political questions to ask? To be asked. That's actually uh, a good question. This is a good question about questions. It's very meta. Uh, yeah, obviously we try to keep this show light-hearted, and the more problem is, there's a lot of issues when you start to go political. So uh, I'm also kind of sorry that I went there two we two episodes ago, and I don't want to make this a regular thing. We will probably address it every now and then when there is something address worthy and not just jumping on the crazy hype. And I mean, the point I talked about politics the last time when I did it was to tell everybody to look at both sides. And I actually did not go into like, oh, the news tweet of the guy and whatnot, no. Um, 
I, I try to keep it for a half hour about what the fuck Kofefe is. Oh god. Um, <laughs> but the, yeah, the, the thing is, what's too political? I don't know. Ask a question, we might answer it. We might not answer it. Uh, often enough, if we don't know anything, like with Brexit, it will be just two minutes of us stumbling, like, oh well, yeah, it's a thing, and then we have British Ninja in the chat uh, of the after show or uh, coming on on call uh, in the after show and explaining what actually is up with Brexit. So. Um, and then there's certain things where it's just like, at least for me, because I mean, on paper, this is a, this is not a bad thing with having someone who's basically the outsider looking in the someone who gets directly affected by this stuff. Mm. However, but yeah, you can because rent. I get directly affected by a lot of stuff that the House and the Senate does. Mm. I refrain to talk about it in a public setting. Mm. And yeah, once again, the problem is first of all when you talk about political stuff, the mood usually goes down because there is less it, it usually is not funny there is barely anything really political that's funny it will though it will not good be good for the tone of the show then obviously uh, whenever you say something political you will find people who are against it so there will be rage war in the comments and everywhere and then you probably have follow-up because then there will be people like oh, last week and you have to continue and this is a rabbit hole I went down with my channel A and Y Opinion Counts and I don't want to go there again. So at the end of the day, ask the questions. If they are too political, we will just not address them like this. You yeah. can ask stuff and when you see like, oh, I asked my question and it never came up over the last four episodes, then you can be like, and maybe it was not something they wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um. The second question, have you guys seen the Villanous shorts that aired on CN Latin America? Yes, I have. Me oh probably not. It you doesn't ring a bell. You've part of it on Tumblr or something. Probably. Um, give me give me a pointer. What is it? Uh, okay, it's basically this show about this guy named Black Cat. And he and his team basically sell uh, supervillain technology to other supervillains mm. and the shorts are basically him trying to sell it and showing how the uh, the mishaps with the technology and there's this character named black hat which kind of looks like murdoch with like um gray skin black hat trench coat i know dragon fox girl has drawn a shit ton of art of him um there was my one curse word of the day um then there's his scientist, which is a guy with a paper bag over his head. And then there's Dementia, who's this crazy looking girl that looks like Vivzy Pop has drawn her. And then there's this cute little uh, blue bear. Um, still nothing rings the bell. Okay. And you it's say still, it's, it's great. It's still a really, it's a really cool pilot series that I, looking at the lip syncing, it must have been done in English first because, or at least produced in a way that when they do dub it in English, it will look good. You know, but I can't wait for it to finally get out to Cartoon Network America because it looks really good. And if you're a fan of the Generation 1 gorilla style, you'll really love the animation for this show. Okay, sounds great. Uh, probably something to check out. Is this stuff uh, 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 available in general somewhere publicly? It's available on YouTube. You can so... probably... I I did find one that has them subtitled because they're in Spanish. Um, it's subtitled and it's all the shorts together, which total up to about six minutes. Okay, I guess you sent me the link and I can put it in the description below. Your thing. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, do, do you think we are capable of doing a few lightnings? Like, very quick question. I believe there have been a few yes and no questions. We can get those out of the thing quickly because we are already over time. Um, I did. Okay, fa a, favorite type of a, favorite type of chocolate bar. Go. Uh, that that one that I had in Germany all the time. Okay, white chocolate bar. Next. Um, Can I have a cookie? No. No, absolutely no. They're all mine. You will never get them. Then again, I can't eat them at the moment. So uh, yeah, I still have an entire bag of cookies. It's all yours. Uh, next, you just come come by and get it. Just come here. <laughs> Any ad uh, any advice? Any, any ad uh, asked by mysterious watcher? Any advice on starting a YouTube channel? Uh, yes, watch my watch two videos. videos watch my two watch my two videos on how to start a YouTube channel. One is one is called uh, my thoughts on Digibrony success. My is how to I believe start a YouTube channel. Watch those. Um, 
More questions. The train leaves the station at 3 a.m. traveling at 84 miles per hour, and then another train leaves at 3.30 a.m. traveling at 72 miles per hour. How hot is Mars? Too hot. Uh, Next. Too hot. Yeah. By Shuggle Dibano. I think that was all. I think those are all the lightning questions we can do today. Thank you for watching the awkward cast. This yes. has been very awkward. Absolutely. It's more awkward than usually. This is ANY saying see you soon. Bye bye.